Welcome back to Our Issues Milwaukee. I'm your host, Andrea Williams. If you're just joining us, we're here at the BMO Harris Bradley Center, where the Harlem Globetrotters come to visit every New Year's Eve. It was in 1985 that baller Lynette Woodard, who is ironically the cousin of the legendary Globetrotter Hubert Geese Aussie, became the first woman to play with the Globetrotters. She set the tone for other outstanding women who had the skills to hang with the fellas. We're being joined by Globetrotter Sweet Jay, who is a graduate of Texas State University and a former player for the WNBA Antonio Silver Stars. Yes. Welcome to the show. Thanks for having me. It is a pleasure to have you here. And so right off the bat, I need to know, what is it like to be a member of the world famous Harlem Globetrotters? You know what, it's surreal. Like I didn't wake up one day saying, hey, I want to be a Globetrotter. <laughs> so for me to now be a part of such a legendary brand, I mean, we've been around for 90 years, yeah. which is such a long time and a consecutive 90 years, um, the longest sports organization around. And so um, just to be a part of it, especially being a female, being able to inspire other females, um, it's just unreal. Absolutely. And it's just like when they first uh, announced that a woman would be on the Globetrotters, it's uh -huh. like that chill bump effect because you're like, yes, yeah, exactly. you know she's got skills, right? <laughs> so uh, you and your other female teammates, mm -hmm. TNT Maddox mm -hmm. and Tea Time Bronner, you inspire women and girls all over the world. That's, That's right. why they call you guys Globe Trotters. Exactly. And you remind us all, not just the little girls, uh -huh. but really all of us, that you can do anything and you just just keep at it and anything's possible. Right? That's very right. Um, you know, I just always use, you know, there's so many male dominated industries and I use the analogy of you know, uh, Hillary Clinton, you know, mm -hmm. she may be the very first female president. And traditionally, obviously, it's been all men. So mm -hmm. not only just basketball, but even in the army, even in politics, um, business, yeah. you know, females are just doing our thing now. Right. I feel like it's the year of the female. <laughs> and so, you know, it's great because little girls can look up to us and say, hey, you know, I don't have to be restricted because I'm a female. Right. I can be whatever I want to be. You're absolutely right. And that's uh, extremely important. So for you, you, uh, did you grow up with that attitude? Like, you know what? Were you out on the court with the fellas? Exactly. Like, with a sweet J. <laughs> You're right. I was uh, actually 10 years old when I started playing basketball, and I played with all boys. And mm -hmm. so my mom would be like, get in here, put this dress on, you know, for Sunday, and be like, scratching my pantyhose, you know, like, but it's crazy because I don't know if that was foreshad foreshadowing what mm -hmm. I'm doing now. Um, I've always played with guys. Um, it was just a thing to do. I, I'm an only child and now I have like 30 brothers yeah. around so yeah. you know they're super protective of me and it's great um, just to be able to hang with them and you know they post some challenges as far as athleticism goes the game's a lot faster we have to use a men's basketball um, which is a little bit bigger than a traditional female mm -hmm. basketball but it's also cool because now instead of throwing a pass to a girl like <laughs> going doing a layup now I'm throwing it to someone who's gonna you know do a 360 <laughs> dunk so um, that's something I never got to do growing yeah. up and so it's like surreal like I'm on a video game like hey you go Love catch this, it. you know, so it's really fun. Yeah, mm -hmm. and speaking of the basketball, you just mentioned the the men's ball is a little bigger than the uh, women's ball when playing. So you've got to do all these globe trotter tricks. That's and right. Like it this. Like that. Hello. <laughs> and yeah. it just goes and goes. And keeps that going. Is hot. Look, I love that. Look at this go. <laughs> So when it comes to that, what was your uh, first trick and mm -hmm. your toughest trick to learn? Because you got to know the tricks exactly. to be a globetrotter. So before I was even a globetrotter, uh -huh. I could not spin the ball on my finger. And so when I did my tryout, I was like, uh, <laughs> you know, like, I don't know what they're going to ask me to do. But they literally were just like, play basketball uh -huh. with guys. And I was like, well, I could do that. Right. I've been doing that since I was 10 years old. <laughs> so um, after, you know, I became a globetrotter, they were like, okay, like, that's our iconic deal, right. like spinning the ball on your finger. So I had to take the ball in the room for an hour a day at least and just try to work on the ball spin, the ball spin over and over and over. And like four months later, fast forward, <laughs> I finally got it to where like I could do like several different tricks with it. And so I would definitely say that was my hardest. That was the hardest. Yeah, that was my hardest trick. Uh, but now like I see like a lot of veteran guys who could do various tricks like spinning around their head. And I'm just like, <laughs> okay, I just mastered the ball spin. Now I got to 
do something else. So, oh, yeah, that's there's, awesome. Just up to your creativity. Yeah, and yeah. it really goes back to setting your mind to something and exactly getting it done, right. Yeah. Even if it is a basketball spinning Spin on, on your, your finger. finger. Yes. I used to see little kids doing it. I'm like, oh my gosh, like why <laughs> I gotta did I get that? Yeah, <laughs> why well, I got did this? But. Now I don't know about you uh -huh. because honestly, I've been watching the Globe Trotters since I was a little girl, mm -hmm. and you know it was Meadowlark Lemon that's and right. uh, Curly yep. Neal. All those guys were playing and I'm giving away my age, obviously. <laughs> but uh, even back then, you hear that song, you know, Sweet Georgia Brown. That's right. It does something to people. It does something for me. I just That's really right. get happy. You exactly. Know? Um, what does it do for you? Does it motivate you when you're out there on the court? Does it make you want to just well, put on your globe <laughs> clown suit? <laughs> uh, yeah, as soon as I hear it out there, it's like, you've got to turn up for yeah. that. Like, um, even when I'm walking around in the airport with, like, my globe trotter sweatshirt, someone is start whistling and I'm like where's my ball I gotta start doing something you know but it just brings happiness to people mm -hmm. you know we're an organization that's brought millions of smiles to people's faces and so it's great because that core that song correlates with their memories from when that you like you said when mm -hmm. you were younger you went to see Curly Neal Meadowlark so hopefully like kids now they'll hear the song and they'll say hey I remember seeing Sweet Jay and Firefly and some of my other teammates you know yeah. playing so it's crazy because it just it stays with the brand it's, yep. it's just uh, it correlates it's a part of that 90 exactly. year tradition exactly. it's just is and uh we bring up the names of the legendary players mm -hmm. and metal arc lemon sadly just passed away mm -hmm. uh what do those legends mean to you like what they brought to this organization to mm -hmm. make it everything it is today you know what metal arc lemon curly neil those names are synonymous with mm -hmm. the brand um again when i meet people and they say oh you play with the glow charge i remember metal arc and curly yep. metal arc and curly like <laughs> over and over those are the main That's two the main two yeah. Yeah. yeah so like just to know that someone had that much power to, they remember really good things about him mm -hmm. um i see footage of him and curly and i'm just like wow they were just naturals. This was their purpose. You know, they brought smiles to people's faces. And so just the fact that I wanted to meet him, you mm -hmm. know, and I'm not going to be able to get a chance to, but I know just looking at his footage and seeing what people, you know, remember of him, it's just great, you know, and yeah. he was a great guy, so. And being able to carry on the tradition that mm -hmm. he helped put into place has to be pretty special, so. Definitely. That alone is major stuff. It's major. That's, yeah. again, like, just putting on this suit, being a Harlem Globe Trotter, you know, again, being synonymous with those names in the mm -hmm. same sentence, even with Meadowlark and Curly, it means a lot. Yeah. So uh, earlier, I was talking to Firefly, mm -hmm. asked him how he got his nickname. So <laughs> I'm thinking, I think I was right when I said Sweet Jay. I'm thinking Sweet Jump. There you yeah. go. <laughs> and my government name is Joyce. So I feel like I'm a sweet person. So it can be twofold. Okay. There. <laughs> so uh, who gave you that name? How did do you have to, when you make the team, uh -huh. do they say, okay, come up with a name? or is this something that you've had for a while? How did that work? Well, okay, so certain people come in with a name. I didn't have a nickname when I came in. Um, so I tried to make one up and I was like, okay, shooter, shooter. And I was like, I could be bang, bang. And then they were like, family entertainment. And I was like, you're right. <laughs> so then um, actually the CEO, Kurt Schneider, he came and he was like, you know, Sweet J works. And I was like, I actually That's love hot. that name. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 So um, the Glove Charters gave me Sweet J. And the rest, as they say, is history. history. <laughs> there you go. I guess Bang Bang wasn't working out. <laughs> <laughs> it reminds me of like the Washington Bullets or yeah, something. Right? Yeah, yeah. Because I was like, I could shoot and be like, hey, you know, but I guess it didn't work oh out. Oh my gosh. <laughs> now, the last thing I just want to ask you, like, we've talked about how you've been able to inspire and I shouldn't say you just inspire women I'm mm -hmm. sure there's some guys who are in the audience looking at you like <laughs> I can't even hoop like that right. you know? so uh, what is your advice to individuals who watch you and taking that concept of just uh, keeping the the pace and staying at it until you succeed. What mm -hmm. advice do you have for people, whether they're playing basketball or mm -hmm. whatever it is in life? You know what, I always tell people to embrace adversity because um, things hardly ever go the way that you planned it. Mm -hmm. I played the WNBA for a very short time in 2008 and you know, I had imagined playing longer, mm -hmm. um, but instead of just quitting saying, hey, that this basketball maybe is up for me, I kept pushing, I played overseas, um, took a year off, uh, coached and taught kids and this, I mean, God brought it back to me with mm -hmm. the basketball. So I feel like it's my purpose. Um, I feel like it's very natural for me. Um, like you said, boys come up to me um, and say, you're my favorite player. And I'm like, 
I didn't dunk. I didn't do anything <laughs> like spectacular <laughs> athletic wise, you know, but um, there's something that stands out to where they they like, you yeah. know, my character. And um, so that means a lot to me as well, because I'm not only touching girl like touching young girls. I'm mm -hmm. also um, with boys. So. Um, it's just amazing, and I say embrace adversity because nothing goes your way, and so just keep at it. Yeah, and everything mm -hmm. happens for a reason. Like you said, it yep. came full circle, and exactly. look at you now. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Well, I'm looking forward to see you do your thing out there on the court, uh -huh. and uh, just continued success, and thank you for taking the time out to talk to us today, inspire us a little bit, and uh, nothing but the best. Thank you so much. Happy New Year. You too. <laughs> as we wrap up today's show, I did want to pay tribute to the man known as the clown prince of the Harlem Globetrotters, Meadowlark Lemon. He played 24 seasons with the Globetrotters and was part of an extremely popular period in Globetrotter history, appearing on many popular TV shows, commercials, and was even immortalized in animation. Animation. We lost the Basketball Hall of Famer on December 27th of 2015. He'll forever be remembered for his patented hook shot, his no-look wraparound pass, and of course that smile that brought joy to the millions of people around the world. In the words of the legendary player and the title of his book, trust your next shot. That is going to do it for today's show. I'm your host, Andrea Williams. As always, I thank you for watching, and I hope you join us again next week as we take another look at Our Issues Milwaukee. Have a great day.